that. Joining me now is Mary Trump, the niece of the former president, Donald Trump. She's the author of The Good in Us, a very important stuff, Substack column, and she's the author of multiple books, including Too Much and Never Enough, How Mike Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man. Mary, it's great to see you again. Thank you for being with us this morning. Let's talk a bit about what we saw in the last week. Donald Trump was fined $9,000 for violating a gag order. Uh, not much money to him these days. He faced a second hearing about more apparent violations, and the judge warned him that if he keeps this up, a so-called incarceratory punishment or jail might be necessary. Nothing seems to cause him to let up. He continues to attack Judge Mershon. He continues to attack Alvin Bragg. They're, of course, not, uh, they're not protected by these orders. Uh, what do you think is going on here? I think Donald is, is doing exactly what he's being given permission to do and what he's always been doing. Uh, nothing stops him because nobody is stopping him. Uh, it, it seems absolutely absurd to me that the prosecution is going out of its way to argue that there should not be an incarceratory penalty at this point, because what is that financial fine going to do? Nothing. Um, because as the judge himself pointed out, that is not a deterrent to Donald Trump. Uh, he'll, he'll pay that fine all day long because apparently the judge can't fine him more than $1,000 per offense. So the offenses will keep piling up unless and until something serious is done. Because, um, first of all, it doesn't matter if Donald Trump is angling for jail time, which is a, another argument the prosecution has made. That's ridiculous, first of all. But secondly, it doesn't matter. You don't find somebody or punish somebody based on what they want, right? You punish them based on the offenses in front of you. So uh, until somebody is willing to step up, and we've seen this even in the uh, civil trials, it still isn't enough because he's getting the money from somewhere else uh, to yep. uh, cover the, the fraud trial in New York City or his uh, payments to E.J. and Carroll. Somebody has to understand that this person will continue to push the envelope for as long as he's allowed to. We've seen it in our politics, and now we're seeing it in a criminal trial. Well, a, from a political perspective, the not allowing him to uh, is probably on voters to, to make that decision. But what else do you think involves standing up to Donald Trump? We're not going to see it from congressional Republicans. We clearly, given this gathering at Mar-a-Lago of key Republicans uh, this weekend, are not going to see it from any prominent Republicans uh, because half of them would like to be his vice presidential candidate. So are you hoping that it's someone in the somehow or someone in the court system? Well, the, those hopes are diminishing quickly because it, because it looks like this New York trial may be the only trial that bege even begins uh, before the election, let alone finishes. Uh, so I hope that the jurors uh, weigh the evidence appropriately and punish Donald appropriately. But we'll see uh, when the time comes. In the meantime, you're right. Uh, the Republican Party certainly won't do anything. And the Supreme Court uh, is going out of its way to make sure that Donald is allowed to run for the presidency completely unburdened by the crimes he mm -hmm. allegedly committed against the United States of America. So I think at this point, it's up to the media, and it is up to the American voters who need the media to make sure that they have all the information they need before they go into the ballot box on November 9th, as if they don't have that information already, but apparently many of them don't. So let's talk about that. I think this is important because uh, it, 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 there are, you know, allegations that the media is doing what it did in 2016, giving Donald Trump uh, a lot of airtime. I certainly hear from some of my viewers, not most, but from some who say, I don't want to hear anything about what Donald Trump has to say. Let's just focus on what what Joe Biden has done. What, in your sense, is the responsible thing for media to do as it relates to Donald Trump, not just covering uh, the legal travails and the things he's alleged to have done, but on an increasing basis, on a daily basis, the outrageous stuff that he continues to say. Ali, it's a very tricky issue. Um, on the one hand, I agree. I'm so sick of him. Um, I'm sick of a lot of the coverage of him that continues to normalize him. You know, we see him covered in a split screen. On the one hand, he's a criminal defendant who's who's allegedly committed all sorts of crimes against this country. And on the other hand, he's a candidate for the presidency as if the former has, doesn't impinge at all upon the latter. It's, it's quite stunning 
to see that his candidacy in some in some respects remains completely unscathed. Now, of course, we can't completely turn our eyes uh, because he is running for the presidency. Uh, so it's it's a tricky line. I think one thing we need to let go of is figuring out why people continue to support him. We need to do that, but we need to do that later after we save democracy. I think right now the only thing we can really do that could have a, a, a big impact on, on voters leading up to November is just making a very clear case. What did Donald not just what has he done, but what is he telling us very explicitly he's going to do on the one hand, and on the other hand, what has the Biden administration been able to accomplish in three years, in many cases with both hands tied behind its back? In the three weeks of this Manhattan trial has been going on, Eric Trump has been the only family member so far to sit in the courtroom and watch the proceedings. In theory, I would take that as being supportive of his father, something we haven't seen elsewhere. What do you make of that, that there hasn't been a, a show of support in the room from other of his, his family members? And knowing what you know about Donald Trump, what do you think he makes of it? I think, for, first of all, Eric showed up because the the defense lawyers probably told Donald that it looks really bad, that he doesn't have any family there. Um, I don't think Donald cares. I think all of these relationships are very transactional. I don't think it matters to him. I don't think his children or his wife think it, that it does them any good to show up. Uh, he's much more concerned about the complete lack of supporters outside the courthouse. I think that's mm -hmm. a much bigger blow to him, his, both his ego and his narcissistic need for uh, attention. So um, I don't really make much of it, uh, honestly. If he wanted them there, they would be there. Mary, I, I, um, I, I always enjoy reading your, uh, your substack, and thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Mary Trump is the niece of Donald Trump and the author of multiple books, including Too Much and Never Enough, How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man.